In this data sufficiency question, we are asked for the sum of two integers, m and n, and there's really no free info other than the fact that they're integers. So I would definitely start with statement two because does knowing the product of two integers allow us to find their sum? I suppose if that product was a prime number, then uh, that could potentially be enough because then one of them would have to be one and the other would have to be the number itself, the, the product and so we would be able to find their sum. But we don't know the sign of these numbers. So, we, so even if we know the product is a prime number, we'd have to consider the mirror image. For example, if the product of two numbers is five and we know that they're integers, are they one and five or are they negative one and negative five? I don't know and those would lead me to different sums. So therefore statement two is not sufficient on its own. In this case, the product of m and n isn't even a prime number, it's four. So are they one and four? Are they two and two? Those would lead to different sums, right? One plus four is five, but two plus two is four. Then they could also be the mirror images of those. They could be negative two and negative two, whose sum is negative four. They could be negative one and negative four, whose sum is negative five. So it was actually four different possible answers with a statement two on its own here. Let's go ahead and evaluate statement one right after the intro. Now statement one looks a lot like they foiled the uh, two factors. Uh, we learned foil in school, but if you don't remember that, it doesn't really matter. We're just adding up all the different combinations of products from these two terms. So you've got uh, you know, x plus m times x plus n would lead you to x squared plus xn plus mx plus mn. Our question wanted to know the sum of m and n, but look at the right hand side of the equation in statement one. It gives us the x squared as we expected. It gives us the product mn as well as we expected. But it also has there that xn plus mx, which if you factor out the x, is just x times parentheses m plus n. And looking at the right hand side of statement one, we see that it actually does give us the number of x's, it's five. So now I can tell, even though I don't know the value of m and I don't know the value of n, their sum must be five, and therefore statement one on its own is sufficient to answer the question, and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.